Hey friends, welcome back to Cornwall and welcome to my little kitchen. Now today's video comes with a warning. In this video, I'm gonna pick wild mushrooms. I've lived on this farm since I was four years old. I've eaten these mushrooms since I was a child. I've picked them here since I was a child. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know where they grow. I know these mushrooms really, really well. However, please do not assume that next time you bump into a mushroom that kind of looks like this, that it's edible, because there's a fair chance you'll die. And then I'll feel really bad and responsible for it. So save us both that hassle, if you would. And if you have an interest in foraging mushrooms and toadstools in your area, then you need to go and put yourself on a course. Do not learn from the internet, and ideally don't even learn from books. Get out there and learn from an expert, because seriously, one wrong bite of something that you pick when you're out on a little stroll, and it could be fatal. So a bit of a spoiler alert, you now know that I find a haul of these and I dehydrate them into this lovely mushroom dust that I then use in my kitchen with gravies and stews and soups and casseroles and all sorts. And it's a fantastic way to preserve a great big haul of these. So without further ado, warning out of the way, crack on and enjoy today's video. I am so excited right now. I literally just looked out of my kitchen window and I saw this little white thing on the horizon. Now there is a fair chance it's a seagull, but I'm hoping that I've finally got some mushrooms back. Oh my God, it is, it's a mushroom. I'm so excited. Let's see if you can see it too. So can you see just on the brow of that little hill, there's a little white blob. That, my friends, is a horse mushroom. I'm 99% sure. So would you look at this for a score? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I haven't had any wild mushrooms on the farm for two years. Put my basket down. So this one here is absolutely perfect. Look at that. So underneath, pull it up by the stem. Oh my God, what a beauty. Now normally, if there's any moisture around, if we have any rain and we get these in, then they're eaten by slugs really, really quickly. That is utterly perfect. That's like a textbook horse mushroom. Oh my gosh. And now this one, I, it's as big as my hand. I'm tempted to leave that and let that go another day. I might just check the weather forecast quickly. Hang on a sec. So here's the forecast for the rest of today, looking lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, eight o'clock tonight, it starts raining. It's not even a heavy rain, but it's gonna rain right through the night, and that's obviously when slugs are active. So no, I'm gonna pick these now. Bit of a shame, but I'm still gonna thoroughly enjoy them. And where I've just picked that mushroom from, there's another little one coming up there. So I will pop over tomorrow and see what state he's in, but he's probably not going to be that good looking, if I'm honest. Right, let's go check these ones out. Now these ones look like they're pretty old, which is unusual. I never get to see them in this state, like with no slug bites in them. So we've got three together here. Let's see if I can get them all out together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the ultimate foraging. I tell you what, this gets me so excited. And again, this is something I've been doing since I was a kid. I know nothing about wild mushrooms other than these ones that I recognize because we've eaten them my, my whole life. Um, but to get them when, they've, when they're open out this much, like kind of saucers, but to have no slug holes in them or no maggots on the inside I mean that's just that's awesome that is a good day for me and I'm taking the stalks as well let's pop them in let's get this big boy here oh my gosh oh he's just fallen off his stalk again absolutely perfect no damage whatsoever and again, I wouldn't normally pick them when they're this size. There's my hand to give you some scale. But because of the forecast we've got coming in, I think I'll leave these two just to see if they can. Oh, look, that one's been eaten by something on the top. That's interesting. I think I'll leave these two because they're so small. Uh, but this one, do you know what? I'm going to take it. Oh, look, there's a little baby one underneath as well. Damn. 
I would have left that there if I'd known. They're beautiful, aren't they? How's that for free food, people? So, that has made me a very happy camper. Good morning, excuse the I've just woken up face. It's 7 a.m. and I've just popped out into the field after a night of light rain. It wasn't actually as heavy as they were saying it was gonna be, but I was just interested to see what, how much they'd grown overnight and how much they'd been damaged by slugs. And I'm actually quite impressed. This little one here, he hasn't actually grown much at all. This is where I took the big one from next to it. But I have just noticed that over here, there's a little baby coming up there. And then these two other ones, so this one has grown a tiny bit, but this one has done really well overnight. Um, no slug damage that I can see, which is pretty cool. The forecast for today isn't actually that bad, so I'm going to pop back this evening, I think, and see how that one is, and I'll probably end up picking that. Tomorrow we've got a lot of rain forecast, so we'll see. I'll come back later and show you how much bigger that one is, but you can see with the size of my hand, that's grown pretty well overnight. And should we just take a nice early morning breath of all things that are beautiful? Isn't that just lovely? Not a bad way to start the day, huh? Oh, bingo! Superb! Well, that's a beauty, and it looks to be intact too. Oh, perfect. Oh, happy days. And this little one looks like it's been knocked over, so, oh, it's been trampled on, look. By the sheep. I may as well take that too. It seems that's all that's left. The other two have disappeared, so something's eaten them. But hey, I'm still happy with that. So the field I'm currently looking at, there weren't any mushrooms the other day and I've just seen something white as I was walking back home and uh, I've grabbed the binoculars and there are mushrooms. So let's go and hit that field up now. Oh, I must get out and pick these beauties soon. Look at the size of them, they're huge. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. I obviously missed that. That's a few days old. But again, although it's been knocked off its stalk, that is in perfect condition. There's another little baby one coming up there. That one's also been knocked off. And we have some serious rain coming in today, so anything I find out and about today, I'm going to take. Obviously, not that little darling. There's no point taking that. So here's my little haul of the day. I could not be happier. That's fantastic. So now all I need to do is clean these up, and then I'll show you how I dehydrate them. So first up, remove all the grass and bits of twigs and stuff that are stuck to the mushroom. I like to pull the stalk off as well because I process that bit separately. So then just examine the underside. Like I said, there is no signs of slugs on here. There's no maggots or little worms. They look absolutely pristine. A little brush on the top. If there's any little marks of dirt, you can just scrape them off with a knife or use a damp towel. Um, personally, I'm in the camp of never washing a mushroom, whether they're ones that you forage yourself or they're ones that you've bought from the shop, because water sits in between these gills. They soak it up like a sponge. And then when we're trying to de dehydrate them especially, or fry them to get them crispy, that water is gonna impede any of that. So that's why I'm pretty anti ever getting a mushroom wet. So that one's ready. You can get mushroom knives that often have brushes attached to them. They're brilliant to carry out in the field if you are going mushroom picking because you can do all this outdoors on a nice day. And then you'll also be dropping any spores that fall back into the field, which obviously is going to ensure that you do get more mushrooms in the future. Okay, gosh, it seems such a shame to take these ones apart, but there we go. So I'm going to pull the stalk out, pop that to one side. 
And again, just brush off any grass or debris that's stuck to the roof of the mushroom. Okay, and now how I like to sort the stalks out is basically you just peel and scrape off any dirt that you can see. And I like to use a little paring knife for this job. Just seems to do a cleaner job than anything else and you're not losing a lot of the meat. Right down to the base. So here's my haul all sliced up and ready to go in the dehydrator. So let me go and grab the shell, then I'll line it all up. And you may notice that the gills are a different color. That's absolutely fine. This mushroom here is just older than this one. This is very, very young. And around 55 degrees is how I like to do it. I like the drying to be nice and slow so that they don't kind of burn, I guess. Um, but I've just found that works really, really well for me. So I've put six hours on. They're probably not gonna take that long, but I'm gonna come back and check them. Okay, your mushrooms are dehydrated when they crack. If they bend and they're all leathery, then you need to pop them back in for a bit longer. But these ones are done. Now what I need to do is they're ever so slightly warm because of the dehydrator heat. So what they need to do now is sit and cool down for about 20 minutes until they're at room temperature and then we can process them. Now our dehydrated mushrooms are completely cool. They're at room temperature and they're still snappy. They're not bending. If they'd have cooled down and been left for too long, they would have absorbed moisture from the air and they would have gone back to that bendy stage, at which point you'd need to put the dehydrator back on for a little while. And actually, I've had that dehydrator out with these guys in it for the last three days because I'd go off and do something, I'd come back, they were dry, and then I'd have to wait for them to cool down, get the camera out, by which time I was doing something else and totally forgotten. So <laughs> it's now been three days that these poor things have been hanging around for. So all I'm gonna do with these ones is process them into a powder. Now the reason that I do this and not keep them whole is because this is how I prefer to use them. You guys need to play around with however you're gonna use them. I have heard of people rehydrating these pieces and then cooking with them like frying them. I can't personally see how that would work because they'd be really wet and wet mushrooms go slimy when you try and fry them. You could dice them or just leave them like this and then break them up into little pieces and pop them into soups and stews. That would totally work. But how I like to do it, especially when I've got a big haul of mushrooms all at one time, is process them down into a powder, store them in my kitchen, and then I can add a tablespoon to a casserole or to eggs or to anything that really needs a little bit of nutrition and flavor added in, or just for fun. Okay, let's pop that lid on and get these processed. my lovely little mushroom dust or mushroom powder. Now, like I said earlier, this stuff can get used in so much cooking, it's untrue. It's a brilliant way to bring in that lovely earthy umami flavor of mushrooms. It's really, really low carb and low calorie. It's really tasty. And if you add it into something like a gravy or into a casserole, oh, it's just gonna be so, so much tastier for it. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, please do bear in mind that not all wild mushrooms are safe to eat. A lot of them will make you very, very ill or even kill you. And I can't stress that enough. Every year we seem to hear about families that go out and forage mushrooms and then unfortunately don't make it. So please don't become a statistic. Be safe out there, guys. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please whack that thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And don't forget to ding that little bell because that means that you'll actually get shown my videos when they get published.
So that's it from me. Have a brilliant week ahead, friends, and a fantastic weekend, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you on the other side. Over and out.